Hi, I'm Sean Spivey. I'm 35 years old. I am originally from Newport News, Virginia, and this is my coming out story. I guess for me it started um, when I was a young child. I knew I was very different. My household, I had a lot of love and support. I had grew up with um, my mother, who was in the Army, and um, my father um, was in my life, but my mom and dad did split when I was early. But I was just raised by a lot of love. Traveling the world with my mom and when she was in the Army, um, I got a chance to be exposed to a lot of different things, different cultures, live different places. Um, so I guess for me, the time that I realized that I was uh, gay um, before I came out, I probably would say I was probably about five years old, maybe, maybe six. I was just so scared because I knew I, I knew I had an attraction for the same sex, but what do I do with that knowledge when you have that, when you're that young? I went on to just be myself. I love to play with dolls or love to <laughs> just do different things that boys were not um, known to do. Um, for instance, my, my father wanted to try to do sports and play football with me and play basketball with me and I wasn't interested in that at all. I love, um, my favorite movie of all time is The Wiz. Um, I always wanted to play um, make-believe and um, I was very artistic as a young kid and I was very quiet. Um, so for me, just having that love and support from my family and my parents, they just embraced me. Was a, was a great thing. About the time I came out, I was in middle school. I was 14 in eighth grade, so roughly about 20 years ago. And I was being teased, taunted, because I talked with a lisp. Um, just some of my mannerisms were maybe a little bit different. I wasn't as what everybody thought as masculine. And um, for me, I didn't really know what to do with that, because I just, was, how did I feel at the time? I felt very alone. I felt very, like nobody understood, because at the time, that was in the mid-90s. At the time, I just felt really, really like nobody understood. I got teased and bullied so much that I was just finally like, you know what? I'm gay. Like, and the first person I told was my uncle, my Uncle Maurice. And um, he, just gave me a big hug and just told me everything was going to be okay and um, told me he loved me no matter what and, um, and slowly I started to tell people that I was comfortable with. Um, I sat my mother down in a very mature way at 15 um, and said, Mom, you know, I have something to tell you. I don't know how you're going to react, but I'm, I'm gay and uh, her response was so what I was not expecting, um, but she gave me a big hug and a kiss, and she told me, Sean, I knew from the time that you were born. I knew that from the time you were little. I love you, I accept you for who you are, um, and we're just gonna learn together. And she didn't know what that meant, and I didn't know what that meant. Yeah, I even got the opportunity to tell my great-grandmother before she passed. She passed when I was 16. Die-hard New Yorker. Um, she, she was really blunt, as she always is, but she, she was really, really accepting. Like, and I couldn't ask for anything better. Um, I'm not saying all these things because it was an easy decision for me, because it really wasn't. Even when I came out, I thought it would be all perfect and better. It wasn't. There, it, in that time in the 90s, uh, where I went to high school, it was very, very a tappy thing. I was the only out kid in my high school. Um, and it was, it was tough. Um, called every name of the book from queer, um, faggot, um, things that, were so hurtful to hear, but I think what saved me from all of that was I knew who I was, and I knew I wasn't those things. So I think I knew my self-worth, 
to say to myself, Sean, you're greater than that. You're, you're not those things. You are just as good, or if not better, than anybody else. You have a heart. You care about people. You are charismatic. You're creative. You're smart. I had to be that kind of comfort for myself to push through those hard times. Um, I remember specifically in high school, uh, my sophomore year, um, there was a fire alarm um, in the middle of one of my classes. So they, of course they had to evacuate the whole building and I went to a big high school um, where I'm from in Newport News. Um, and when they evacuated the building, of course, um, we're all on the football field and I'm talking to one of my friends and just having a casual conversation about the rest of the day and about show choir at the end of the day and yada yada yada. And then I started to notice something really bizarre kind of going on. Me and my friends were being circled by a bunch of guys. And I didn't know, know really what was going on. And then out of nowhere, I get attacked by somebody. And a whole bunch of people attack me. And just started beating me to a pulp, pretty much. Um, yeah. And I'll never forget that feeling, and I was just crying for help. And the hurt I felt, it was, it was I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and the fact that I had to go through that. But what I think surprised me the most is the people that were in my corner. Um, a few of the um, people from my show choirs, um, one guy in particular, um, he actually jumped in to try to help me. So it let me know that not all people are bad and not everybody in this world wants the worst for you. Just because a few people, a few bad apples spoil the bunch, uh, so to speak, doesn't mean that everybody thinks the way that um, these negative people or clowns do or bigots or, or people that are not accepting. That's, and the, at the end of the day, that's their issue. And I had to realize that at an early age. If people are not gonna like me for who I am, then they're missing out. That's, that's, that's them missing out, not I haven't done anything wrong. Um, I talked to my mother um, and we were going to switch me out of high school to go to another high school. But then I started to think to myself, that's gonna just, that's not gonna solve the problem. That's just gonna be me running away from the problem. And there were times that I was scared in high school. Um, there were times I didn't even like going to the, the men, the, to, the, to the boys' room to use the restroom because I was afraid that I was gonna get maybe jumped or beat up in, in the bathroom. Um, so I had supportive teachers as well that um, my, my choir uh, director, um, Sharon Cole, um, for example, she would let me use the restrooms and the dressing room so that way I wouldn't have to use, go to the restroom in the, with the public, uh, so to speak. Or, you know, um, I would go not during uh, class shift times so that that way the bathrooms weren't as crowded, um, things of that nature. Of course, you want to go to prom with somebody that you're dating and all that stuff. And I didn't really have that. Um, I was dating someone that was not in, in school, but of course I couldn't bring him to prom. Um, one, I didn't know how people were gonna react and things of that nature, so I chose not to go. But I did the craziest thing, <laughs> believe it or not, for our, we have a, like a senior after prom. And I kept telling uh, all the seniors, um, yeah, I'm gonna come to the, to the senior prom and drag just to, just, just to do it, just to see if I can get a reaction. And everybody's like, no you won't, no you won't, you're not gonna do it, you're not gonna do it. My friends are all like, no you're not gonna do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do it, you know, just to, just to see what will happen. And I did, it, it was hosted at our mall, I did. Full wig and makeup and nails done and heels and looking like Diana Ross and 
Yeah, and like, I, as soon as I, I get into the Afrocom, I get cheers from everybody. They're like, because they were so proud that I was able to um, be myself and come there as myself. But what ruined that evening, the principal got a call and came to the Afrocom and said that there was a threat on my life at the Afrocom, so I was asked to leave. And I will never forget when I graduated from high school, at my graduation, I went to get my diploma and my principal whispered in my ear that this is how I should look, meaning in my, um, my tie and my shirt and looking masculine versus femme. At the end of the day, and I was so bothered by that, that somebody, that I'm supposed to respect would tell me something like that. At the end of the day, be you. I found my one solace to deal with the hurt um, was my music. That was my one way to escape what I was dealing with, with feeling alone or feeling like I couldn't relate to anybody. Um, and there was a time that I felt like I had to prove myself to, every, to the world that, okay, I'm gay, here I am, accept me. And at the time I learned some lessons that just because you come out, um, you, not everybody's gonna perceive it the way that you want them to perceive it at first. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. And now, 20 years later, I look at it and think about those times that I was bullied and teased and ridiculed for being me, I look at that now and I feel so empowered. Those people didn't win. I didn't allow them to win. I chose my own destiny and created my own path. It takes great courage to be who you are. It takes great courage. And I was the kind of person that I was in high school, especially, I, 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 I pushed the limits. I wanted to break the barriers. I wanted everybody to know that I was gay. Just so I could be the first one, because I was so proud of myself to be able to represent my community in that way and be so young and be so vocal. Four of my best friends today, um, we have a really, really tight bond from college. And um, we've been friends for over 16 years. And it's because I can identify with them and relate to them and they, we can talk about our, our problems, what the good, bad, and the ugly, I like to call it. Um, and um, that support system is really, really important to have. I think that's why a lot of people, when they're coming out, maybe live in fear, is maybe they don't have that support system and they feel like they're gonna be kicked out of their house or, um, or um, bullied or beat up or, or the worst can happen to them and yeah that's just the thing you have to do it when you're ready to do it and um, just know that there are people that out there that are going to love you and they're going to support you and be there for you no matter what um, and through it all it's tough at first but you live and you love and you learn and you grow that's all you can do Pretty much what I have to say, so thanks. <laughs>